Good morning, everyone. I'm Reen Wilcoxon, owner of Embroidery Garden, and welcome to my January demo. I've decided to do another year of uh, monthly demos. It went well last year, so I decided to do it again. So I'm going to let everyone start rolling in. Tell me where you're from, what you've been stitching. And um, I'm putting up a link right now that um, is a link to take you to a page on my website that lists all of the products that I'm going to be showing today. So um, watch the comments to see, make sure everyone can hear me. Uh, Sarah, you're very welcome. Um, so I guess you can all hear me and see me. So let me show you what I'm going to be talking about today. Today, hi, Lynn. I'm going to be showing you one of my snowman zipper cases. And um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a different kind of a fabric other than just like plain cotton. I'm going to be using cuddle fabric, which is from Shannon Fabrics. This is kind of a, it's a low pile minky, but I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using cuddle three on this. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. Hi, Tammy. Thank you all for joining me. Um, and I'm going to give you some samples, show you some samples of other things that I've made using Cuddle. My goal is to get you out of that cotton aisle, that quilting aisle, and to use some other type of fabrics in your in the hoop designs. Um, they work. You know, some people think you just have to use cotton, but you can use a variety of other fabrics. I see Caroline, uh, Kit, Barbara. Thank you all for joining me today. Um, let me switch the camera so you can get a better look at um, what I'm going to be showing you today. Okay, so here's my snowman zipper case. This one was stitched in cotton. It comes in two sizes. So this one is five by seven. This one's six by 10. Um, these you see quilting on these. Um, I chose not to do the quilting on the one that I'm going to do today. You can quilt on top of cuddle fabric. It quilts beautifully. I just decided not to do the quilting so that um, it's a time-saving factor. This one too, I just put like a little button here. It's a little snowflake button. On this one, I embellished it with another little snowflake button. Okay, so let's look at what we need to do this um, design. I've hooped a piece of, um, this is the no-show poly mesh. I've got my six by 10 hoop. I have already gone ahead and stitched the two steps that stitch the zipper down. So what happens is the first step of, of the design, you stitch two parallel lines. The machine stops, put your zipper down, tape it in place. Step number two comes in and stitches the zipper down. Now I stitched it in white so you really can't see it, but the zipper is attached to the stabilizer. So those are the first two steps of the design. And I've gone ahead and done those for you already. I'm going to switch the camera back because I want to talk about a couple of things. Okay, so some of the things I'm going to be using today, um, I am going to be using my press and a hoop pads because I am doing an in hoop design where I'm going to be working on the back side. So if you saw the link that I posted at the very beginning, that takes you to a page of my website where I have put all of the products that I'm gonna talk about today with direct links to them. So if you're on your computer, you could open up another page, just have it, you know, uh, another window opened up to the side. These are the press and hoop pads. Anyone who ordered them back in December, they're shipping today. You should have gotten an email with a tracking number. I have a limited number of the Brother Baby Lock, and that's what these are. This is the five by seven, the six by 10, which is the one I'm gonna be using today. Hi, Ginger, and the um, 8 by 12. So I'm going to keep the 6 by 10 out. I have um, pads for Viking Foth and for Janome. So you can find those on my website. I have limited quantities right now. So if you've been waiting to get them, you need to get them uh, now. Hi, Beverly. Hi, Laura. Hi, Vicki, Sandy. Um, again, thanks for joining me. So let's kind of... Uh, let me just show you a couple of samples. And then while the uh, design is stitching, I'll be showing you some more samples of things that I've made with Cuddle Fabric. So Cuddle is made by Shannon Fabrics. They're out in California. 
Um, you can go to shannonfabrics.com to see all of the beautiful uh, cuddle minky fabrics that they have. You cannot purchase off of shannonfabrics.com unless you, you know, are a wholesaler, you know, you have a business, you have a wholesale account. You can find cuddle fabrics at all of your local quilt shops um, or online. Personally, I've purchased a lot of kits. I like to do the blankets and yardage from Fat Quarter Shop, but there are tons of shops that um, sell uh, Shannon fabrics. Okay, so one example, this is a bunny, my um, in the hoop bunny softies, and I skipped the face on this one and I just used cuddle fabric. And I think that's a really cute look. And this cuddle is just so soft. Um, it makes really nice stuffed um, toys for kids. They love it because it's just so soft in the texture. Um, Shannon Fabrics, of course, you like I said, you can go to their website. They have a blog where they have tons of free projects and um, tutorials and things for you to do. I'm going to be showing you a few things. I've written maybe six blog posts for them. They have a Facebook group called I Love Cuddle Fabric which you can join and they show tons of people just make beautiful things, blankets, uh, stuffed animals, apparel. Um, let's see, there was a recent a wine bottle cover out of cuddle fabric. So, I mean, there's some really cute, different ideas. Um, they also, every Tuesday, they have what they call Sew Together Tuesday. And that's where their national educator, Teresa Coates, takes you all the way through from beginning to end of making a project. It could be their self-binding blanket. It could be one of the strip blankets that they have. Um, it could be a, a stuffed animal. It could be anything. So that's every Tuesday and it's at um, one o'clock, I'm sorry, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So you can check that out too. Uh, Lori, you wear a high pile uh, mask with the high pile stuff. It tickles your nose. Cuddle fabric does kind of make what they call cuddle dust when you cut into it. But there are some tips and tricks um, to keep that dust down. And again, if you belong to their I Love uh, Cuddle Fabric Facebook page or you watch Teresa Coates, there's always tips and tricks being given out. Uh, Polly likes the uh, press and a hoop pads. She says they're awesome. Thank you. Um, Mary's from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, cold. Yeah, I'm in Indiana and it's pretty cold here right now too. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna get this design going and get it started. And then while it's stitching, you know, the face, um, I'll be showing you some other samples. So let me change the camera because the next step is to actually work on the backside of the hoop on this design. And this design is from embroiderygarn.com. So let me just get my camera switched. Um, the stream yard has kind of changed up a few things, not too many. Okay. So again, my zipper is already in place. I am going to use my press and a hoop pad, my six by 10. So how you use it is there, it, the top is a wool mat, perfect for pressing. The backside has this non-slip material on it. So I can set it down and when I, while I'm working, it's not going to slip because it's got non-slip materials on the back. So I'm going to turn my hoop over and I'm going to place it on top of the press and a hoop pad. So the press and a hoop pad, now that I have my hoop on it, I'm able to press down without disturbing my stabilizer, which is perfect when you want to tape your pieces to the back side, like I'm going to do here in just a second. Um, you're not disturbing your stabilizer because you can put as much pressure on the hoop now as you want and get your tape really secured. It's also perfect for pressing on the backside of the hoop, which I, I'm going to show you that in a couple of steps here. Um, other things that it's good for, applique. There are a lot of people um, that like to, as they're doing applique, to press from the backside. So the pad gives you support when you're pressing on the backside. Lori, uh, Bernina is going to be coming. Just, you know, kind of hold on a little bit. Um, just keep watching Embroidery Garden's Facebook page and newsletter and things will be announced there. It's also great if you have to rip out stitches. So if you have to rip out stitches, instead of like just holding the hoop up and trying to work, 
um, if you put it down on the pad and then work to remove your stitches, you've got support underneath here. It's also great for the part of the my designs, my in the hoop designs come when we're going to be uh, clipping the stabilizer out from behind the zipper. And they also make just a great little pad to have by your sewing machine when you're sewing and maybe quilting, making blocks, and you can press them. Okay, so let's get back to the design. We're on the back side of the hoop. I'm going to be taking my lining fabric and it's going to be going right side down. And I'm going to take one long edge and line it up with the bottom edge of the zipper, just like that. I've got my tape. I've got some already uh, torn off. And now you can see I can really press the tape down to adhere it to the back side. The next step is to go to the front side of the hoop. And I'm going to be taking my piece of cuddle fabric for the front. And when I embroider on cuddle, I like to put a piece of Pellon. Uh, it's SF 101 on the back side. And what this does is it gives it a little bit more body. And um, uh, okay, it gives a little bit more body. And it to me, it's easier to embroider on. Cuddle does have stretch. Let me grab one of my other pieces. And it does have a little bit of stretch. So that's why I like to put the SF 101 on the back side to uh, kind of stabilize it. Cuddle also has a nap. And you can see, maybe you can, hopefully you can see, um, I can tell the nap is going downward because as I rub my hand down it, um, all little fibers are laying really nice. If I go the opposite way, there, you can see that. Um, you can see what it looks like if I'm going against the nap. So when I put my pieces down in my project, I want the nap to be going down. So pay attention to that when you place your pieces. And that goes for the piece we're going to place up here at the top of the uh, zipper and the piece that's going to go on the back side. So I like to audition the piece to make sure I have it correct. So let me just, it's going to go like this. So it's going to get stitched here. So I know I'm going to be turning it down. So let me check the nap. And I have it correct because the nap is going downward. So let me get this lined up and let me get it taped down. And I am using transport tape. That's my most favorite tape. And one thing, Cuddle is a little slippery. If any of you have used it, you know that it slips a little bit. So you do want to tape it down. Later on, I'm actually going to be pinning it down um, because it does slip. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change my camera over to the machine. And what the machine is going to do let me get this on here. It's going to stitch these two fabrics to the zipper, to the bottom edge of the zipper. That is the next step. Let me go ahead and get it going. Make sure that everything's all right. And I am using um, like a pink thread just so you can kind of see it a little bit. Uh, Ginger, there are different types of cuddle. Again, if you join their Facebook group, if you go to their website, if you um, watch their Sew Together Tuesdays, you will see all the different types of cuddle um, that they'll be using. I'm also going to be showing you some samples um, here. Let me. Put up. There we go. All right. So you can see that it got stitched to the zipper. And I'm going to take this tape off here on the front because I don't need this any longer. All right. So the next step is to fold this fabric down. Now, if I was using um, cotton, I added batting right here and then pulled the fabric down. Um, I don't... Um, uh, I don't use batting when I'm using the cuddle. It's a little bit thicker. This is what they call cuddle three. It's like a three millimeter um, height. So I'm just going to pull this down. 
Uh, Janet, the way this design is created, um, no, the zipper would not go on the back. And I am going to pin it down because I don't want this to move any. You notice if I um, kind of pull it, you look up here, I want this to be nice and flat up there at that fold, at that seam. So I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to pin at the very, very bottom of the hoop. I'm pinning through the stabilizer because I want this to lay nice and flat. So first, let me get that done. The next step is going to actually baste the fabric into place for me. It's just going to come along three sides, baste it down, and um, it'll hold it in place. So let me go ahead and get that on the machine and get it basted down. And then I don't have to worry about it moving or shifting or anything. So let me just, uh, and you can pin in the hoop. Just make sure that you keep your pins out of the way of the machine, of the needle. And let me get, keep my eye on it just for a second to make sure I've cleared it, and I have. I'm going to go ahead and change the camera again. And I'm going to look at some questions. Cute project. Thank you. Um, all right. Remember, if you have some... Um, Okay, Tammy brought up a good point about the press and the hoop pads that you can hang them with the handle. I like the handle because when I have my project on top, it's easy for me just to grab the handle. If, say, I do want to move it to my um, ironing board or something, maybe I my ironing uh, my iron is away from my machine or something, and maybe I might want to do that. So I do like the handle. The handle comes in very handy. Okay, so this step, step three is done stitching. I'm just going to show it to you real quick. Um, you can see where it basted it down. And I'm going to change the camera back to the table again so that um, you can see what I'm going to do next with this. Uh, because of Cuddle does have a pile, I want to um, use a piece of topping. This is Solvi. It's like a plastic film topping. And I'm going to put it on the top where the face is going to stitch and the arms because it helps to keep the stitches from sinking down into the pile of the fabric. So I'm just going to, I want to make sure the entire area is covered. I could take these pins I put at the bottom out because that basting stitch is holding my fabric down. And now I'm going to pin this in place. I like to pin it down so I know it's not going to move. It's not going to pucker. It's not going to shift on me in any way. And I have to turn it because it's easier for me to pin this way. So I'm just going to pin it up here out of the way. And I'm going to pin it down at the bottom because I want this uh, topping to be nice and smooth. This is the type of topping um, that you would use on towels, etc. So just get it smoothed out. And the next few steps are going to be doing the face. Um, and the arms. The first thing that's going to stitch are the cheeks. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get it onto my machine. That's why I was using that pink color thread um, because I knew the next step that was going to come up would be the uh, cheeks. So let me just go ahead, get that going. And it'll only take a few mi uh, minutes to stitch those cheeks. And while that's stitching, I'm going to show you some other um, examples of things that I've made using cuddle. And let me get the camera brought up. Okay. So let me kind of check to see if there are any comments coming in. It is cute. Um, hi, Mertis. Nice to have you here. Okay. So some of my in the hoop designs that I have used cuddle fabrics on. Um, let me grab a couple of things here because I'm going to show you how I did them originally in cotton. This is my bunny treat bag. It, this is where it opens up. You untie it here. You can put jelly beans, little gifts in there, um, for Easter. So this is it in cotton. And then I did it in cuddle. So you can see how nice and soft this is. I mean, it's just... It really makes a big difference. I think that I might change the camera. 
Um, Cindy, it does dissolve, but we're not going to dissolve it with water. I'm just going to tear it away and it's going to be um, fine to just do it like that. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get the camera changed and I'm going to put these on the table because I think you can get a better um, look at them. So this is the little bunny treat bag in cuddle. And this is it again in cotton kind of shows you um, a little close up. My cheeks are done stitching. So I'm going to quickly change my thread here. The next thing that's going to stitch is the nose. So I'm uh, putting some orange thread in my machine. And, you know, during while it's stitching, I'll switch back over to the um, machine and show you it's stitching. But for now, um, I'll leave it there on the table because I'm going to be showing you some more samples here in just a moment. Okay, I got the machine threaded. Let me make sure everything's okay and get it started. So that's the bunny treat sack on embroidergarden.com. Um, oh, these. I love these owls. Okay, so here are the owls done in fa uh, cotton fabrics. Cute, cute. I mean, cotton is fine. But here they are done in cuddle. And this one, this is cuddle three. That's the three millimeter pile. But the um, wings that I did, let me see if I can't turn it more this way. So you can see this is a higher pile of cuddle. That I believe is the rosette cuddle that I used. Um, and on this one, let me double check to see if I did use batting in it. No, I skipped the batting. And I skipped the batting just because these, um, you know, different cuddles kind of make it thick. So I don't really need the batting in it. And then here's the other size that comes in the set. And this one, I did use cotton fabric for the body. I used metallic, uh, King Star metallic for the uh, area around the eyes. And this one has even a higher pile. Let me kind of, there we go. A higher pile of cuddle. This is more the cuddle lux, they call it. And I used it as an applique on the wings. So I just think that it's, it just really adds so much to the designs using these different types of fabrics. Let me go ahead and change the camera for a second and see if I got any questions coming in. Wonderful owls, love the owls, I do. Um, that's an older set of mine, but I think I really updated it by using Cuddle. So, you know, on um, this one I used, it's entirely made out of a Cuddle. It's on the back. It's on the front. Um, this one, it looks great. Just to use cuddle as an accent on designs too. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can just use it as a little accent and it really, really adds to um, a design. So the machine is stopped. It's ready to um, need to change the thread. And let's see, now all the black stitching is going to stitch. So let me get this orange thread out. Get the black in and the black it's going to do the eyes it's going to do an outline um, detail on the nose it's going to do the mouth and all right it's ready to start stitching so i'm gonna go ahead and get that going uh, let's see, Murtis wants to know, let me get the camera switched again. Murtis is asking if there's a link to buy Cuddle. Um, you can go to, whoops. Let me get the camera switched here. Okay, so you can go to shannonfabrics.com and you can see all of their Cuddles. Um, only people with a wholesale account can buy from shannonfabrics.com, um, but your local quilt shops, a lot of them carry it. Or if you just search online, you will, um, you'll find lots of uh, online stores that sell it. Like I said, I buy a lot of the kits and yardage from fatquartershop.com. Hi, Jill. Nice to uh, see you here. Um, Tammy, 
I'm just using a 7511 needle. I did not change my needle. Now, if you're making blankets and stuff, and I'm going to show you, let me grab. I do make blankets because I love the blankets. This is a recent one that I just made. If you follow Embroidery Garden online, you will see that I um, just posted this one that I made. This was made out of what they call their sweet strips. And when I'm doing a blanket like this, I'm going to use a stretch 9014 needle. Okay. When I'm embroidering, I'm, I'm using a 7511. Okay. But um, again, to get, you know, more facts, more information about Cuddle, join the I Love uh, Cuddle Fabric Facebook group and be sure to watch the Sew Together Tuesdays. You can watch those in that group. But um, I'm going to show you a couple of tools too that are helpful to use when you're doing something like this. And of course, this is sewing. Thanks, Carrie. So to get back to a couple of other things that I've made using Cuddle, this was made using Cuddle 3. And I think you get a better view if I change the camera and put it on the table. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is one of my in the hoop zipper bags. Um, it's just a basic zipper bag. This was made using Cuddle 3. That's the same type of fabric this is. Cuddle 3 means it's three millimeters thick. Um, I'm going to show you something, too, in a minute. If I brought it over here, yes, I did. I can cut this cuddle on my scan and cut, and it cuts perfectly. On this bag, I did some quilting. You can see that it quilts really nicely. And this is one of the flowers from my Garden Flower Lace Collection. And what I did with this was I actually stitched the bottom layer of the flower directly onto the cuddle. And then I made the other layers, the other three layers, I made those dimensional. Let me kind of give you a look at that. And then um, attached them, glued them to the front of the bag. And um, I mean, I love this. I think it makes a really nice little cosmetic bag. Um, uh, a lot of the girls, the young girls, teenagers, young adults um, love things like this. Another thing that I've made and let me grab it quick. You might have seen that me post this. I made the Santa bag this year. I used Cuddle. This is a little bit thicker Cuddle. Um, let's see, Roberta says I'm breaking up a little bit. I wonder if my machine is kind of being a little loud. So I made my Santa bag out of Cuddle and this was the Sparkle. Um, I'm sorry, it's Snow Dazzle is what they call it. Um, so I use that for like the hat trim, the beard. This is the Cardinal hide for the top. And look, you can't even see that zipper, but there's a zipper in there. And the cuddle, that's no problem at all using the cuddle, this longer cuddle by the zipper. The zipper opens and closes perfectly. It's all on the back side too. And I also, I made this little pom-pom out of the same cuddle just by cutting a circle hand basting around the outer edge of the circle putting some stuffing in tightening up those stitches and then i sewed it to the uh, zipper pull so my machine is i need to change the thread again so let me go ahead and get that changed um the next step in the design is doing the um white part of the eyes so I'm going to go ahead and change my thread back to white. It's just little dots in the eyes. You can see it on the sample there. But how many of you have actually stitched with cuddle fabric? If you have, kind of, you know, put a comment in about what you stitched with cuddle. Like I said, embroidering on cuddle is very easy. The only thing that you really want to do is use that topper to keep the stitches from sinking down into the, um, the pile. So I've got my white thread loaded and I'm going to stitch the little dots in the eyes. And I'll grab something else that I've made with Cuddle. All right, so I did a lot of baby things. Babies love Cuddle. It because it's so soft, the texture is so nice. Um, this is my in the hoop bear lovey. 
I did it using pink cuddle. Um, this one, uh, it's made in the hoop. Hold on, my machine is done with those eyes already. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the brown in so that I can get this um, finished up and we can continue on. I see Caroline, I know Caroline has made uh, several blankets using the cuddle. They are just so soft. I made uh, a couple of gifts. I made larger blankets uh, this year. I made one for my son. It's kind of a big blanket. Um, and I made one for my daughter-in-law. She really liked it. So I'm just getting the brown thread in. And I'm stitching the arms now. Judy, um, there is going to be a replay. I'm sorry if it's uh, cutting out on you. Um, so on this one, this stitching here, this birth announcement information, this came from Rhonda's website, A Stitch in Time Designs. And I just kind of filled it in with basically some fake information just so you can get an idea of what it would look like. So this is the... Um, blush color. I've done it in brown also without any other embellishment. I've done it before too using um, putting a name on it and also putting crinkle material inside. So when you the baby goes and kind of rubs it and touches it, you they hear that little bit of crinkle. Melissa says pillowcases. Yes, I've made pillowcases out of it and they are fantastic. Um, Shannon Fabrics also sells Embrace, which is a double gauze fabric. And I used it on here because it's very soft and it's very absorbent. So on my burp cloths, these in the hoop burp cloths, um, I used a variety of soft absorbent uh, fabrics. Uh, you could stuff it, but I didn't want to, Lori. Um, I tend to like it like this, a flat little thing that they can just hug and love. But you could definitely stuff it if you wanted to. So this has the embrace on the front, and then I put the uh, cuddle on the back side. So it's so soft. This one, this bib, I have an in the hoop bib pattern. And again, it's got the cuddle embrace, that's their double gauze, and the um, uh, the cuddle three in blush on the back side of this, I used waffle weave, which Shannon fabric also sells waffle weave. The bear lovey pattern, uh, Tammy is on my website, embroideryyarn.com. Again, here's the same bear. This time it was done in the double embrace, or I'm sorry, the double gauze called embrace. That's Shannon fabrics name for it. And I put it on the back side. This one, same thing, different colors, using the minky and um, embrace. On the back side of this one, I use terry cloth. Um, terry cloth is also sold by Shannon Fabrics, and this is like a really soft terry cloth. Ginger, I do not wash the uh, cuddle before I use it. Same thing, this one, though, I instead of the terry, I used the um, waffle weave on the back. And then just some more things. I did a blog post for Shannon Fabrics on these. Um, Darlene, they can fit babies up to like two years. So, and, you know, I'm not going to go through every one of these with you, but you can see I used just, you know, combined different fabrics. This is just a flannel on the back of this one. So it's almost done stitching the arms. And so I did talk about cutting, cuddle, on my scan and cut. I use the rotary blade. Um, cuddle, Linda, Cuddle is um, Shannon Fabrics term for a minky. But the minky you buy at like the big box stores, it is nowhere near what this Cuddle fabric is from Shannon Fabrics. This is a pillow band. It kind of, you know, it's got a Velcro on the back. You wrap it around a pillow. But on this, I this is Minky here. I'm sorry, this is the Cuddle 3 here. And this is an SVG file that I cut the Cuddle out of 
and used it on there. And the cuddle cut really, really nicely. Um, it was amazing how much it, how well it cut, but I cut it using the rotary blade, the new rotary blade that they have for the scan and cut. I'm going to look and see if there's any questions. Um, uh, and in the hoop di cloth diaper, um, I don't know if that's possible. I'm not sure that that um, there's a hoop big enough to do that. So let me move this and let me bring over the design now because we've gotten the face and the arms done. So now I don't need this um, solvy anymore. I don't need the topping anymore. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to remove my pens. Now I do not have to soak this in water. All I have to do is I'm going to, you know, carefully tear it away. You do want to make sure you get like in areas like this. Let me kind of come up here. And all I'm going to do is just tear it away. I, there is no need at all for me to um, get this wet, okay, because it just tears away. That's why I use this plastic type of solvy. And, again, links to everything that I'm using, all the products that I'm using is on that uh, web page on my site. Let me get that posted again. This is the, I just posted the web page. Um, that I'm showing all the products on. Now, if you get some that's kind of stuck here, like in the arms, I'm just sticking this tool underneath here, lifting it up and tearing it close to the stitching. That's all I'm doing. All right, I can, I got a couple little pieces I could worry about getting, but I'm not going to right now. We're going to continue on with the design. The next step, go to the back side of the hoop. So I'm going to use my press and a hoop mat. Let me kind of move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'm going to put it over my hoop, or I'm sorry, over the mat. I can take this tape off of here. I don't need it right now. And I can pull, the, the next step is to pull the lining down. Now, I can tell you I've seen tons of in-the-hoop bags made. And I can tell, you know, if someone doesn't get the fabric pulled down nicely and taped, or their tape comes apart, because sometimes when you look inside the bag, you're going to see a bubble up here. So the press on a hoop pad comes in very, very handy to pull your fabric nice and tight. While it's on top of the pad, I can take my iron and now press. And what I'm doing is I'm getting a nice flat seam right here. It's a nice flat fold. Thanks, Jill. Um, everyone who has gotten the pads really loves them. Um, they're just, they're just so handy and there are more uses, like I said, than just pressing in the hoop. So the next step would be to take your next lining piece of fabric. It's going to go right side down and I'm going to line up one long edge with the top edge of the zipper. I'm on the back side of the hoop. Again, I have to tape this down. Let me grab some of my tape. I love to use this transport medical tape. I think it's the best tape there is. And I'm going to just tape it down and see I can press because I have the press and a hoop pad on the back. If you're doing this, whoops, tape the wrong edge. If you're doing this um, without, you know, the pad underneath, you're pressing on your stabilizer and you're disturbing it. And, you know, you're going to make, make wrinkles or um, other things come up in your design. Okay, so I've got this down on the back side. Next step is to go to the front side and put our next piece of fabric. Now, let me show you this. This is the one that I made out of cotton fabrics, and you notice you see the zipper there. On this one that I made, you don't see the zipper because I lapped it. I made a lapped zipper. Terry, the little iron I'm using, it's a steam fast iron I got off of Amazon. Um, and to do the lapped zipper, and let me just show you, here is the zipper underneath here. You don't see it because I actually, all I did was this piece that the instructions call for, I cut it wider. And then I folded one edge under. So here, let me just show you. I just fold one edge under like this. And when I place it, um, I place it 
I cut it wider this way so that when it gets stitched on, then when I go to fold it up, I don't fold it all the way so it exposes the zipper. I only fold it, you know, to maybe here, right about, right at the eyes. And that way the zipper is underneath there and you're not going to see this whole zipper. I am going to do it though, where you're going to see the whole zipper. This is the lapped one. And then this one is how I'm going to do it today, where you're going to see the zipper. Everything's white though, so it's not really going to matter. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this tape down in place. Oh, one thing I want to check, I want to make sure that when this gets folded up, that the nap is going the correct way. Let me make sure. Yes, it is. So I can go ahead and tape it down. Remember, you always want the nap running in the same direction. Whoops. Let me get this taped down. And the next step is going to stitch this piece on on the front. And remember, we have that lining on the back side. Let me make sure everything on the back side is good. And for this, I'm just going to leave my same color thread in. I had the brown in. I'm just going to stitch it with brown. You'll be able to see it. Um, another thing I wanted to show you. This is um, my penguin set, my penguin zipper cases. The little zippers are here. A little bit harder to see because um, of the black fabric of the penguin. But um, there's the zipper. I used a different fabric up here at the top. They're made exactly like these are. But now it looks like a little hat. So if you used a different um, fabric here, <clears throat> excuse me, other than the white, it would look like your snowman is wearing a little hat. So I thought that was kind of cute. Again, I could have brought this fabric down and hidden the zipper, made a lap zipper. You can do that with any of my designs. Remember, all you have to do is cut that piece that goes above the zipper long, um, wider so that when you fold it down, you have excess that folds it up. I would cut it probably, cut it an inch wider so that you make sure you have enough um, of that fabric. All right, so the next step, let me show you the hoop here. So you can see where it stitched this on. Let's go to the back side. So I'm gonna put it over top of my pressing pad. Um, the next step now is to fold this up. So let me get this tape off. I don't need it because it's stitched down. I'm going to fold this up. And again, I'm going to use my press and a hoop pad and my iron. Now, again, you can see it really good like this. Hold on. I got fabric um, bunched up underneath there. If you, Most people are just going to fold this up and tape it. And I don't know if you can really see the bubble. I don't like that at all. You know, it makes your project not look as nice as it can be. So this is why the pressing in the hoop makes your projects look better. It makes those seams nice and flat and puts them where they need to be. So pressed it and I am going to tape that up because I'll be flipping the hoop over and I don't want to um, have that flip on me. We all know how that how that goes, don't we? Okay, so at this point, it's time to trim the stabilizer from behind the zipper and I have to grab my little scissors. Forgot to bring my little scissors over. So um, I like to use these little bitty Kai curve point scissors. And I have to turn it so that it's easier for me to, um, to cut. So what I'm doing is I'm only cutting this piece of stabilizer here. Right underneath the stabilizer is my zipper. So all I do is get the tip of the scissors underneath that stabilizer. And let me make sure I have it just underneath the stabilizer. And since I have this support underneath the hoop, I can sit here and just take the scissors and glide them. And I'm cutting that stabilizer. Then all I have to do is cut the opposite side. 
and you can see how quickly that goes. The reason we take that stabilizer out is so that we can have access to the inside of the bag when it's done. Yes, Murtis, I made those pom-poms. Um, very easy to do. All right, uh, one other thing I want to uh, tell you about. Uh, cuddle again is slippery. So I like to use serrated scissors. I think maybe you can see it says micro serration right here on my scissors. These are some Kai scissors. They're the 7200 series. I love these. And what is good about them is they have this little serrated edge. And what it does is it grabs the um, cuddle as you're cutting it and nothing slips. So you get um, nice, uh, nice cuts, you know, and no frustration. Um, tips for cutting that zipper. I don't know, Tammy, you saw I did it pretty quickly. My tip is using these type of scissors. I have to use a curved tip scissor, sharp points, get underneath that stabilizer. And I don't clip like this. I just glide them along and it cuts it. Just make sure that you, when you get your scissors underneath that stabilizer, you're only underneath the stabilizer. I can tell you in all the years I've been doing my in the hoop designs, I have never, ever cut one of my zippers. Um, yeah, this, the stiletto, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, Kathleen. That is something else you need for um, working with cuddle. Again, at that web page that I posted the link to, I have links to all of these things. So all you got to do is go to that web page and click on whatever you see, and it'll take you directly to it. So I'm taking the tape off because I don't need it because this piece is already pressed down. Um, I saw someone say something about batting. Again, I'm not using batting on this because my cuddle's a little bit thicker. If you wanted to, you could. I chose not to today. Again, it's kind of a time saving factor. So this fabric is folded up and I'm going to tape it in place. Let me get another piece of tape here. So I want to make sure that this does not move on me. Uh, I see Jill saying cuts like butter. It was either that stabilizer cut like butter or these um, serrated scissors cut cuddle like butter. They really, really do. And you'll get a lot of these tips from the group. I love cuddle fabric um, and their Sew Together Tuesdays with their national educator, Teresa Coates. So the next step of this design is to unzip that zipper halfway. Okay, make sure you got that. Um, I'm just checking the back to make sure I did everything I was supposed to. I'm going to place this piece of cuddle down. This is actually the back of the case. I want to make sure that the um, nap is going the same direction. Now, this piece doesn't get folded. Remember, these pieces here, got this one got flipped up. This one got flipped down. This one is not going to flip in any way. So the nap is going down. I'm just going to put it right side down on top. <clears throat> excuse me, and I am going to pin because it slips. Okay, cuddle is slippery. So I do want to pin through everything. This is kind of my, um, oh, what do I want to call it? My safeguard. I'm pinning at the very bottom of the hoop and at the very top of the hoop, keeping the pins out of the way of um, the stitch line. So I am like right down here at the frame, whoops, sorry, the frame of the hoop is where I'm pinning. One more pin and I'm gonna be ready to stitch the next step, which on this design, it's just going to stitch a line here to um, secure the piece of cuddle I just put on. So let me get that going. Um, that's stitching now. A couple other things I wanna show you. Uh, let me get the camera switched about um, some projects I did um, with sewing with cuddle. So I created this cute little, well, it's Easter basket, Easter bag, I guess. This is the same cuddle I'm using. This is sewing. This is not in the hoop. Although the ears I took from another one of my projects uh, in the hoop projects and did do the ears in the hoop. But on this one, could be hard to see, but I used heat transfer vinyl on this. The name is glitter and then um, the nose is glitter and the eyes and the whiskers and mouth, that's just um, 
uh, like matte finish um, HTV heat transfer vinyl. So this was a very easy, quick project to do. Show you the side of it. So you can see it's like boxed corners here. Just a cute little tote bag for Easter. If you see the snowmen behind me, these are both made out of cuddle, the same cuddle three that I'm using today in the white. Um, they are my snowmen. I just enlarged the template. Um, that information can be found in my Facebook group, the in, uh, in the Hoop Facebook group uh, for embroiderygarden.com. The scarf and the hat on both of them were made with various types of cuddle. Um, there's a really cute, easy pattern um, for cuddle that is, it's an infinity scarf. And that top snowman, I just made a small version of an infinity scarf for it. All right, so this is done stitching over here. Let me just grab it real quick so you can see where it stitched. It stitched the line at the bottom to attach this fabric. Last step is to go to the back side of the hoop. Let me change the camera real quick because we're almost done with this. My mouse wants to stick on the uh, cutting mat here. So the last step is to take the last piece of fabric and put it right side down on the back side of the hoop. And I am going to tape this down in place. We don't want it shifting. We want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. At this point, sometimes when I'm putting this fabric on the back side of the hoop, sometimes I even use the iron and I press it down because it just kind of makes it, um, I don't know, it just gives it a nice feel, a nice look, and it helps to keep it nice and smooth and straight. Okay, so the last step is going to sew it all together. So let me get it back on the machine, get that stitching, and I've got a few more samples to show you, and that will be done. So let me go ahead and just show you, um, uh, hold on here. Okay, so I made this pillow, and this might be better to show you using the other camera. All right, so this is Cuddle. Um, I kind of saw something at a store and kind of wanted to mimic it. This all has been machine embroidered. So what I did was I created the petal shape. I machine quilted it using my, um, my luminaire. And then I machine sewed the petals together. And then the circle here in the middle is a circle cut from cuddle and, um, it's double sided. Both sides look exactly the same. I may go back and, um, you know, sew a yellow button here to kind of push it in to give it like a little bit of dimension. Uh, Jill or Cindy, yes, I did make the little bunny bag. Again, that was sewing. That was just sewing. It was nothing to do with um, in the hoop. Um, I do have one more blanket sitting here that I made. This one's called Scarlet Park. This is a kit. Now, the, the two blankets that I showed you, these are smaller blankets kind of give you a, a look at it, but um, they have different types of cuddle, cuddle three. Um, this is cuddle three. A lot of them are printed like this that are just beautiful. And then these other cuddles, they're kind of what they call the luxe cuddle. There's hide, which um, is kind of a really neat looking cuddle because it almost looks like the hide of an animal, the way that it's made. All right, so looking for more questions. And it's ready to come out of the hoop. So I'm going to switch the camera again. All right, so I'm taking it out of the hoop. I got tape on my hoop, but there we go. And now it's time to trim it. I am gonna take my pins out just so that I don't happen to um, uh, cut my pins, try to cut through them at least. I'm done with my press and a hoop pad. Remember, borderguard.com to get those. I'm going to go to the opposite side here, my lining side. Here's my opening. And I'm going to be using these serrated scissors. I always cut um, on either side of my opening because that fabric needs to be left longer so that you have something to turn in. It needs to be maybe about an inch long. So I'll just go ahead and trim that down now. And now all I'm going to do is trim around the um, snowman shape. These bottom corners are uh, 90 degrees, so I'm going to clip those uh, off. 
A lot of times I do not um, cut through the zipper. Today I'm going to just um, to save a little bit of time here. A lot of times I stop and I leave that zipper longer, maybe a half inch at the edge. It kind of prevents your zippers from pulling out at any time in the future. And okay, this is clipped. Now, since this is what I call a shaped bag, meaning you have all these curves um, here at these inward points, I would notch it out. And all I'm doing is cutting like a tiny triangle out. I kind of missed some of this fabric here. I can get that off. And I would do that on both sides. And then I would take the time to um, clip into the curve, just small little clips about a half inch apart all the way around the head and then the body. I'm not gonna do that today to save a little bit of time. Down here at the bottom to get rid of some bulk, you only need the two lining pieces because that's where it's opened. So I'm going to trim off all of this excess. You can see how nicely these scissors just grab that cuddle and just uh, cut it. At this point, again, after I would have clipped into the curve all the way around, just reach in and we're going to turn it to the right side. And I was going to look to see if there were questions while I was doing this. Joe misses the tutorials on It's So Easy. Um, yeah, the I did do the Lovey Bears and the Bibs. That is an It's So Easy episode. You guys could search for that. Um, I, again, I did do probably half a dozen um, blog posts for Shannon Fabrics um, that you can go to shannonfabrics.com, click on blog, and then read the blog post there. So I'm taking my tool and I'm, I want to get these bottom corners pushed out nicely. Um, I like to round out the edge too. I would go in and round out the head. Take the um, openings and turn those in. And just use fusible tape. Get it all nice and straight. At this point, I do like to take my in the hoop designs and press them on both sides. Um, I'm not going to take the time to close this up or anything today. You would want to open up your zipper all the way. And I am going to grab my, uh, hmm, I don't know what I did with my finished one. Here he is. Just so you can get a look at him. Reach in now and turn this bag to the right side and it will be done. Again, I'm, you know, I'm doing the monthly vi video demos all year long. If you guys have ideas for something you want to see, let me know. And I'm going to just use the tool again. Get these bottom corners poked out well. You do want to take the time to, you know, get your corners and things poked out nicely. The um, Annie's stiletto, I'm going to be using that in just a second here. I would use this to round out everything. And basically now the bag is done. Um, I got a couple of little pieces of that topper here. I got a little thread I need to clip. But of course, you know, you take your time and get that all the way that you like it. The stiletto comes in handy for a couple of things. If you wanted to, as something was stitching, kind of hold it down so you don't have your finger in there, you could do that. Um, but when cuddle, since it has a pile, it also, when you stitch something, the little fibers get caught in the seam. Now, I don't know how well you can see this. I'm going to try to let it focus. Over here on this side, I'm going to start. And you can kind of see these flattened areas. That's where the fibers got stitched into the seam. It's going to happen with anything that has um, a pile to it. What I used for the corners was um, the RNK uh, turning tool. Love that. Um, they're get, they are a little bit hard to find, but when I find them, I post them in my group, um, where I, where I can find a link to where I can get them. So to use this little stiletto, what you're going to do is just at the seams, just kind of scratch at it and fluff it up. And let me kind of do this side here and I'll give you kind of where you can, a visual where you can see both. So this is, I fluffed it up here. 
And then this is where it hasn't been fluffed yet. And you can kind of see the difference. So you would want to take your stiletto and go around and, you know, go around the entire edge. And even here at the zipper, I can see where, you know, it's flattened out a little bit. So I just take it and you just kind of go back and forth and kind of scratch at the seam. This uh, stiletto by Annie is perfect. I love this stiletto. Um, it also has what they call a wooden iron here at the bottom. So if you're doing quilt blocks or something and um, you just kind of want to finger press, this is better than finger pressing because you can put it down and you can rub and, you know, press something without really getting your iron out. So um, the By Annie Stiletto, the link to that is also in um, that link of things I put up. And let me go ahead and put it up again. This is a link to a page that lists everything that I talked about today. And let me get the camera changed, see if there's any other questions before I let you go today. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that you learned something. Remember, go join um, the I Love Cuddle Fabric Facebook group and watch for their Sew Together Tuesdays. Teresa takes you beginning to end of a project. Uh, yeah, Rita, if you want the pressing pads, you need to be getting them right now. I've just sent out an order this morning um, and you know I got a limited supply again. Uh, let's see, people are posting where you can buy um, Cuddle Fabric. Uh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. And be sure if you join their group, go in there and look at some of these projects. They are absolutely gorgeous. Last thing I want to talk about before I let you go is next Saturday. Um, it's Joanne Banco and I will be doing our let's get creative meeting. Um, Joanne's going to be showing um, couching using the embroidery machine and couching using a sewing machine, using yarn and cording. Joanne always has lots of great information and beautiful um, uh, samples to show you. I'm going to be doing um, embossing on towels. I don't know if you can really, let's see if you, I can get you to see this. Can you see? There it is. Um, so this is an embossed design. If I can pull it up there, great uh close so you can kind of see what embossing is basically it's stitching all around something so the pile of the towel is sticking up um it's kind of neat you uh purchase the meeting you get all of joanne's instructions for her demo you and you get my files the embroidery files this fits in a five by seven hoop a to z go to embroiderygarden.com click on classes then click on let's get creative uh, yep, yeah, Vicki, I saw you signed up. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, crossbody with the owls, certainly you can turn into a crossbody as you're making it when this piece gets flipped up, put your straps in there. A, kind of a tip for me when you're doing straps, what I like to do anyway, you can see it on the Santa purse. I don't put the whole strap down inside the seam. I make tabs, like these little tabs with a little piece of hardware on it so I can attach the strap later. The problem with when you put this uh, strap down into the seam, when you're sewing, you have to like, you know, kind of gather all this up in here and put the fabric on top and you're gonna have a big bubble. Um, so you, you certainly can. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Um, again, you can rewatch this on Embroidery Garden's YouTube channel and on Embroidery Garden's Facebook page. So thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great day.